more in name to the all defensive first team. Over his decade in New York, he was a fan favorite for his hard nosed toughness. The head coach for the Killer Three, Charles O. Takeover in Memphis. Week four rolls on in the Big Three season. Two and two and one teams, Bivouac and Killer Threes, trying to move up in these standings. Power, triplets, and now ghost ballers all at three and one. That all advantageous position as teams now trying to position themselves for the postseason. Welcome inside FedEx Forum in Memphis. Sloan Martin alongside the Hall of Famer and basketball legend Tim Lieberman, also a winner today with power moving on to three and one. We look at both of these teams and specifically the Green Brothers for Bivouac, how well they've been playing with each other. I'm gonna say this about Gerald Green. He's a really good recruiter because he got his brother playing with him and these guys are, are pretty much unstoppable. You can see what Green can do, he can elevate over you. He's got a lot of bounce in his game and his brother, we didn't know a lot about him when he first came in, but Garland Green, this is a very difficult combination to guard. And we've got another Green who's fantastic as well. Not related, Dante Green of the Killer Threes, who's fourth in the Big Three scoring this season. Yeah, he's coming off being player of the, the week in the Big Three. Average, I think, is in the high 20s last week. Glad we didn't play him. But he, he's a handful. You can see from the shooting percentages, he's made fours. He is having a resurgence in his big three career. Along with him is Franklin Session, Josh Powell, Dominique Johnson, and Javier Carter for Bivouac. Green is going to be the player coach today. We talked about his brother Garland, Corey Brewer, Ryan Collins, and John Jordan making up this roster for a team eyeing the playoffs. And you see Gerald Green leading the huddle right now as the player coach, which is just not easy. I think about how much is on your plate when you're getting this team together. And Charles Oakley on the other side understands that as well, but to also have the impact of playing too. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not easy. Uh, first of all, Oak, he's been at this for a long time. He's good. I'm sure he wrote the rules. <laughs> no game clock here in the big three first of 50 wins. Free throws are one shot and the value depends on where that shooter was out. Give two points, three points, or four points just for one shot. Underway here, game number five of six today in week four. Two and one teams as Session beautiful off class. Yeah, Franklin 
Simpsons is just so quick. And it's a tough guard, even for somebody like Corey Brewer, who is a, a really good defender. He made such a splash last year. Is fearless, even if he's undersized at times, too. Undersized is just a, a number, right? When you have his type of game, and he creates so much havoc offensively and defensively. We weren't able to see Isaiah Briscoe today for Trilogy. He was not with the team, but those kind of guards that have that fearlessness can find success, but they can take contact and they can finish. And Session right there with him. Well, you know, for, for what they struggle on the defensive end here, this is Ryan Hollins. His feet were moving, but a really nice play defensively by him. And that's what Dante's going to do. He's going to attack the rim. He's big, he's strong, and he knows how to get to his spots. What I was saying about you know somebody like Franklin Sessions, for whatever you think you have, like in a mismatch here, you got to deal with him on the other end too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just doing that is Collins. He waited him out and knew when to go up for that denial. Okay, uh, Franklin, you, you made me look bad here because Ryan <laughs> did a really super job of staying with you and using his length. He knew it was coming. He knew he had that mismatch, the size disadvantage. We were too strong off glass. We were covered perfectly. And one opportunity for Green, who had 28 and 12 last week. It doesn't surprise me. Uh, I, I thought he got himself in better shape this season. He came in more aggressive and with a focus, and he's ready to play. I think he goes in the category, and even here in week four, it feels like it's a, a bigger group of players who are making cases for the MVP, but that goes along with wins as well. I don't think at all it's been narrowed down. With a two-handed slam is Hollins putting it away. That's just a beautiful pick and roll right there and understanding what the defense is doing and how they're playing you. And Ryan Hollins, if they switch, Mr. Big gets in front of the rim, and he did. Making an impact on offense and defense. They go under that screen to Session. He says, I'll knock down this too. Yeah, I'm not sure I would go underneath that screen at that part of the floor. I mean, that's a dare shot, a practice shot for him. Brewer hit by Powell. I have nowhere to go. Defense. Collins denied himself. Green wanted it right back. And knocks down the three. That's part of the fast break in the big three. Get the rebound, kick it out, make that second pass. Yeah, there is very much a transition game, even if it's not 92 feet. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and and the, the quicker you are, and the more time you have on that shot clock. Gerald Green, even though Section tried to pull the chair out from under him, misfires. But that's a strategy with the littles. You get so heavy and so tight on them and you step back. Oh, the Littles are more dangerous than anyone. You think you have this matchup, you're going to back him down. He pulls the chair out, he takes the ball away from you. Session goes to the guard. Able to get up on his own, but he's going to be checked out right now. Yeah, that was a, a pretty tough screen. It was a legal screen um, by Brewer. It says the contact was, was pretty fierce. Watch this right here. They're going at it with each other. Sessions is just dogging the ball and doesn't see Hollins. And that's where your teammate, your teammate has to be talking to you. Screen, 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 left, 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 right, right, right. And if you don't know the screen is coming, you're gonna get, you're just gonna get teed up like that. It absolutely is that communication because you don't wanna see that happen to a teammate. The communication is this, it's early, loud, and often. It has to be three times, but you have to call the screen right, 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 loud. The first one tells you the screen is right, the second one early, loud, and often because the crowd and the music. It's a 10 to 2 lead for Killer Threes operating on all cylinders. Bivouac without their head coach Gary Payton here. Gerald Green is the player coach. They're just one for eight from the field to start. And it looks like Session is staying in. Hopefully he is feeling okay as he returns to the floor. He cuts back door, loses it. That's going to lead to an open layup for Brewer. You know, coaches say it all the time, you have to catch the ball with two hands. You have to, especially in traffic. 
Do I sound like a coach? <laughs> That's all we want you here. <laughs> Inside to Dante Green, likes his matchup against Brewer, and he just handles his way to the rim and now to the free throw line. But I like what, what Garland Green is doing. If, if Dante Green gets the ball down in that block area, you have to stunt at him. You might stunt once, you might stunt twice and get back. Look at that. He's stunting, which made Green have to stop, you know, even though he's a force of nature. That was a really good defense by Garland Green. because he's the player coach today over to the scorer's table. And he's making the decision now to bring in the fire. Garland Green letting his brother's chances against Dante Green, last year's player of the week after this call. Yeah, I think that was a really smart play right there by Green, uh, by Gerald Green, to bring the fire. Remember we said, you know, use it or lose it. So this is your opportunity to, to hopefully stop Dante Green. Coach has won, perhaps. Dante Green already facing trouble from Garland Green. The turnaround, no good, and defense prevails. If the defense pushes you off your, your straight line drive angle, I believe you have the benefit of the doubt of what's going to happen on bring the, bring the Fire. You have a brother who has belief in his brother, and it pays off. Garland Green for three. He reads his own miss and chases it down. Gerald Green now against Dante Green. He's going to take it beyond the arc and misfire. Good box out by Session. Five on the shot block for Session. And he loses it. Great effort by Brewer. He keeps it alive and an easy two. All out effort from Bivouac. Yeah, that's why sometimes you just can't play and dance with the ball so much and lose it because everybody's watching you handle and now they're going to get a free bucket. And maybe as a defender you can detect that rhythm, read it, and poke it away. You can, and when you try to steal it, steal it when the ball's coming up on the dribble, not when the force is being pushed down on the dribble. Garland Green attacking hard, it's left short, gets it right back. And a whistle. You know, I, I got to do a little homework and find out who came up with Bibble. I, what was it? Was it Cube? Was it Clyde? Was it Jeff Quantinet? Who came up with this name? I and mean, what is a bivouac? It is. Looking at the dictionary right now. Well, we're going to keep that a surprise for you, Nancy. Don't look at that. Okay. Pretend you didn't see that on my computer screen. I didn't see anything. I did look this up before because it is unique. And maybe our list, our viewers may not know as well. So we're going to revisit. It's a horsefly. Bivouac. It's not a horsefly. No, no. Look, I went to Old Dominion. I'm doing <laughs> no. the best I can. Stop. We won two championships. I, I had the best two, three GPA in the history of the school. <laughs> <laughs> you see the ants on their I'll leave it at that. We'll see how it goes from there. 12 to 6 is the Killers 3. The Killer 3's lead right now in Game 5 in Memphis. We get contributions all over the place.
written in the dictionary, so the mystery kind of continues. to three is the Keller Threes lead here in the first half and maybe you've been around the big three since 2017 but you may not still know what bivouac is and we asked some players around the big three if they did. What's a bivouac? Bivouac. Ants. I don't know. It's like an ant arm. It's an ant arm. Bivouac is an army of ants. Yeah, that answer with authority, that is what it is. I mean, there are a couple of meanings. It's also a shelter, but they're mostly on track. It's defined by a structure formed by a large army of migrant ants. So to quote Cube, a bivouac is an army, an army without a home. Traveling from land to land, they make home wherever they roam. Do these army of ants understand the economy right now? Yeah. And how <laughs> land is so expensive? Oh, gosh. I need some of these ants to call me. <laughs> Look, I've been trying to buy some land for a while, and getting a loan is not easy if you don't have good ant qualifying. I wish you good luck with that. Never easy. Brewers scoring inside, but now you understand the ant connection. And you know what? There should be more team names, I think, Nancy, in sports named around or after ants because of how powerful, coordinated, strong they are. Well, you know, the, the strength of the wolf is the pack, and the strength of the pack is the wolf. And so this is little ant wolves. It's I not how it. big you are, it's how many friends you have bring coming to the fight. That's right. Rebound! Finishes. Thought there was contact, but a tough finish for Brewer. Yeah, you got to be able to take advantage of that. Corey Brewer, I think that's a really tough matchup when you get down low with Franklin Sessions. Take care of it. Going into the paint, it is oh, hard to get to the oh, oh. And he is fast. Hey, hey. Oh, Bivouac now. Within four, and this is a team trying to turn things around. You see their recent records, they were four and four in fifth place in 2019, but missing the playoffs the last two years, and they have themselves in position to try and get there. Well, they're playing great basketball right now, and you know, Charles Oakley, um, he certainly knows about getting to the playoffs. He played with the Bulls, he played with the Bulls. He spent half his career getting playoff checks, so he could <laughs> refine his golf game. <laughs> And you know, he's an incredible cook. I was on his cooking show in his New Jersey. Show. Yeah, Lawrence Taylor, myself. And it's a little fun, it's a contest, and it's uh, it was so much fun. We had a great time, but he is like a master chef. What did he cook, or do you have a favorite meal of his if this has happened more than once? Well, I did the I did the show, but what he did, he can cook anything. I mean, he is an unbelievable chef, not a cook, a chef. But how does he compare with you? Because TJ said that you are the chef. No, I, I'm a chef for my family. He's a chef for everybody. But how do you keep wow. that body? There's two people in the weight room in every city. It's me and Charles Oakley. At, he's getting in there at 5 in the morning. I'm getting in there a little bit later. <laughs> Brewer is fouled. No, it's no surprise that he is a man of many talents. Just by the way he played, too. And whether it is golf or cooking, I'm sure there's a lot of intensity there to be good. You know, everybody wants to have somebody like Charles Oakley coaching them, being around him. He's a great guy. He's very loyal. And what, you know, what he did for the Knicks and Ewing and what he did for Michael Jordan, you want somebody like that on your team. You hate playing against him because you're going to pay the, the piper. But when he's on your team, it's a love fest. To me, that's a mandatory role to have on championship team. Dante Green, that's the two. Yeah, but he also has Dante Green. And he also has Franklin Sessions. And he's done a really good job. He just picked up Javier Carter. He played overseas. And he's been a great addition to this team. Garland Green falling away, can't get it to go. As 
The Killer Threes have extended this lead. Session adds to it, and he is churning now to Brewer as it's a 24 to 12 lead. I, I probably talked with a, a little smack in my day, but you know, Corey Brewer has been in the league, made more money, and been a great teammate. So if you hit one shot, I think I'd let that thing go. Corey Brewer, even if you're Franklin Session. Brewer gets that to fall off glass. Thought there was contact again, but he stuck with his teammates' miss. Oh, Session matching up throughout this game. Session looking for the blow by, can't get the finish. You know, one of the beauties of this league, it started out with all those amazing names, the Amari Stottlemyers, uh, the Mike Bibbies, the uh, Baron Davis, some of the, the, the Corey Maggetti, Big Baby Davis, you know, the Tino Mobleys. And then as uh, they pushed the age from 32 to 28, you got a different young player that was towards the end of their career. Now it's 22. Now you got all these young guys who are playing against legendary guys, and they're trying to say, I got something to say. Dante Green's got something to say. 26 to 14 takes us to the half. And what a half it was for the Killer Threes. Dante Green, 12 points, four rebounds, trying to move his squad to three and one this season. Session, fantastic as well. Seven points for him, three assists. We head to the half. Killer Threes with the lead. Lieberman. The Killer Three shot 65% in that first half. It just felt like they were getting any shot they wanted. They were. They were executing. They found the mismatches. They were in their pick and roll. I thought their fast break was, you know, pretty stout as well. And Bivouac, they they really have to start attacking, drawing the defender, and then kicking it out to a shooter for an open shot. 
instead of a contested shot. Dante Green was fantastic leading his squad in double figures. 14 points for him to lead all scores. You know, he's one of these guys that's really big and strong, but he's got great footwork, and he knows how to get to the basket, and, you know, he doesn't do it too fast. He just does it very efficiently. He also had his uh, four rebounds to go along with that. We were able to check in with Charles Oakley, who's mic'd up for a bit in that first half. A lot to be happy about, but kind of get this win for his squad to go to three and one. He's saying, let's do it right now. And I think that's probably the message for the second half here to maintain this lead that they've built shooting so well. Well, this is a very important week for the teams that are two and one, like the triplets and power, because everybody was bunched up at like six or seven at two and one. So if you can get to three and one, you know, the top four teams go to the playoffs. So you want to create a little bit of distance. One of these teams is not, you know, is going to be three and one. Green misfires from three, hoping to pick up the efficient shooting they left in the first half. Powell loses it out of bounds. It's Bivouac basketball. Bivouac without their head coach, Gary Payton, on with the team today. Gerald Green taking his spot as the player coach, not on the floor right now. We've already seen him bring the fire. Session pulled the chair from Brewer. Hollins, the hook shot not there. Brewer can't reverse it. Yeah, you've seen that more with some of the younger players, the smaller players, I should say. They're getting up into your chest, and then they're just stepping back. I mean, that is a, a great strategy. And he steals it from Hollins. He knew the big man was going to bring it down. That's what makes the small ones so tough. Hey. Session knows every trick in the book, but there he fouls. Number one rule for a big, when you get it in your seven foot, you keep that ball up. So you can't get a Franklin Sessions right there to strip you. You catch it, you go right up. It's a lesson you hear as a big, don't bring the ball down from the time. You're seven years old, doesn't matter how long you're playing. Uh, look, I remember my mom saying don't run with scissors, okay? <laughs> if you're a big, do not bring the ball down. Session, mid-range two, doesn't go. Brewer will clear it out for Bivouac. Call his own number, and that's left short. Collins puts it away. Collins has been the bright spot, a couple of points, a couple of buckets for Bivouac. But it has been Dante Green, the leading scorer today, as Powell misfires. Again, if you're, if you're the killer threes, you, you got to stay with what got you this big lead. Just don't get jump shot happy. Make sure you're putting the ball inside. Collins fading away. It's tipped right to him. Garland Green, long range two. And Collins was held. That's what Brian Hollins does. He understands his role on a basketball team. He's a very smart guy. And he just uses, he's big, he's strong, and he knows where to get inside to create mismatches. Another three ball. Session leaves it for Carter, who's got a good look, but it's left short. He gets it right back. Got to box out, fellas. He's by himself on the three-point line. You did one job, but remember, we talked about multiple efforts. And who knows best where that rebound is going, and the guy who yes. shot it was Hollins, fouled hard from behind, but Dante Green thought it was a block. Look at the effort right here. This is a very physical game. Great opportunity for Javier Carter to get in there and flush this thing. Right, those 50-50 balls, you have to be able to get your hands on them. 
Collins misses as Green grabs the rebound. And Nancy, I wanted to revisit something you were talking about before the half, where we now see so much diversity in terms of age and experience in the big three and how it's become a place not just for players to extend their careers, but also to make their name known. Like, they come in eager. We saw that with Brandon Moss earlier today with Three-Headed Monsters, his very first big three game, and he was determined to make sure people remembered him. And this is a place, because of the way the league has built itself, where you can do that. Well, again, in this league, you have to understand Ice Cube. He is not satisfied with just, okay, we're here in year six, how are we getting better? Now we have an international team with the aliens. We've got younger players. We've got players oh my God. Because they're so interactive with the fans. And, you know, he's just not, you know, sitting pat and going, okay, we started this thing with big names. We're, we're making names for ourselves, for some of the younger guys. And the Euro kids are coming in and playing amazing basketball. Are there some younger players that are catching your eye? I mentioned Brandon Moss we saw today just his first game. Has he got, we saw it. TJ Klein, it's only his second season too. He still goes in that category. But you know, Akil Mitchell, yeah. uh, Glenn Rice Jr., right. TJ, there's so many of these guys who are just, you know, they deserve what they're getting. They deserve the opportunity and, and the notoriety. And even if they're only a couple of years out of school too. Session. Line up a three, that's too strong, and Mullins snagged that board. 31 to 18 is the killer three lead. That goes out of bounds off the shot. Really, the only way that I believe that Ben Black can get back in this is the killer threes have three fouls. If you could get to the foul line and get them to that six foul. Now you're taking the ball out of their hands and that's a strategy. Dante Green launches a three, chased down by Brewer. He gets into the paint, awkward shot. Session goes right at Hollins, but he makes the stop. He was prepared to dunk right over him. See, Oak is not going to be happy with this. He's not going to be happy because now this became just a mono, a mono moment of, okay, you blocked my shot once. Oh, you blocked my shot twice. And he just might make a substitution. But I think it was a great timeout by Charles Oakley uh, right now. Try to settle his team as they leave. 31 to 18, and also making sure that they stay sharp at this point, too. Oh, yeah. At, at, you're at, absolutely right. But, you know, in the second half right here, you know, Bibouac is one for 10 field goals, and Killer Threes, who is really in a rhythm, they haven't scored the 0 for 9. So they started they, 11 of 17 in the first half. Yeah, so, you know, you got to get back to what you do well. You're exactly right that this is a good reset moment for the Killer Threes leading 31 to 18. The second half, there's only been nine points total scored. It has just been a tough go offensively here in game number five, week four of this big three season. It's been very physical. Uh, the officials are letting the guys use their talents and go after it. But I think it's been a really great defensive half with some pretty offensive uh, players. Last week's player of the week. They try to lob it into him. It's off target, and that means Brewer can take it away and score. Yeah, you gotta know where you're passing that ball. If you pass the ball from out of bounds and you're throwing it under the rim, even if Green catches it, what is he gonna do with it? Johnson, well contested shot. This one by Green is not. And that goes over the back up, the back door. This was Oakley in session in that last timeout. Did you see what he just said? He says, you're not putting enough parsley on your pasta and in your sauce. Franklin, call me, please. <laughs> you can impart all kinds of advice. Basketball, cooking. Same thing, you gotta have good ingredients. Carter will drive and kick Green. Go to God, and he's got 17. And see, 
I, I like the substitution, and I, I like uh, Dominic Johnson. He's running stuff. It's not one on one, and now you get that easy shot. Jante Green strips Scarlet Green. That seems to be, Nancy, and I'm not just saying this because of your team power being so unselfish, the way the ball moves, the players move. That seems to be such an important ingredient to success on, I mean, really just basketball in general, but three on three especially is moving and sharing. Well, there's a time and place for going one on one, and every team has to have a Pargo or a Glenn Rice Jr. There is a time and place for that. But more importantly, if you can run some sets and you can move the pieces on the chessboard, it's, it's almost like physical and mental manipulation. We subscribe to that. <laughs> and it works. This play is under review, being challenged. Yeah, I think this ball went off of his knee without a doubt. It's going to be Kino 3's ball. Another look at that play with Dante Green able to strip Garland Green on his way to the It's nice that you, you, you get to keep your challenge now. And I'm sure as a coach, that's got to be something extremely valuable. Like in the WNBA where they just pull back the coaches' challenges, you don't keep that one. It's so important to be able to have that. If that's the rules, you got to take advantage of it. One more time, great screen and roll with DJ and Javier. And that's what you got to do. You got to be physical to the basket because Ryan Hollins is a shot blocker. He's not going to just sit there. He's going to try and go after the ball. Carter at the free throw line. One free throw for two shots and he's got it. Three players balance scoring for the killer threes as Brewer gets the loss. And he will go to the charity strike. Yeah, that was a really nice straight line drive by Corey Brewer. And, you know, you, you've noticed that, you know, Charles Oakley is going over and he's bringing the tacos, the fire. Still no tacos here yet, though. I'm pretty disappointed. Charles, <laughs> he's, he's mic'd, right? <laughs> this is the play. He's bringing the fire against. It's going to be Corey Brewer and Dante Green. Good matchup right here. Brewer goes right at him. Oh, yeah. Fires off glass. Oh. Defense gets the upper hand. Yeah, great challenge. But also, you've noticed that Franklin Sessions has not been in the game since Charles was not happy with him. He already has stuck with Dominic Johnson here in the second half. This team leading 36 to 20. Johnson can't get that to fall. Still up for grabs to Green now, and he's fouled by Brewer. Whole lot of physical contact we've seen today in this yeah, season. These guys, uh, the day after a game, they're getting iced up, they're going in ice tubs, they're going in think tanks and water <laughs> tanks. Cry cryo machines, they are taking care of their bodies. I was going to say hot, cold, no matter what it is. And they're going to clean the floor here after Carter almost got tripped up. Do you have any kind of post-game, day-after routine? You're still just in the gym. The, the thing I do after every game is I'm blowing up the league for film. Uh, I, I like to have the film the day after. I break down the film. I send my first iteration to my team. We break down the matchups. I have the plays, what they ran, who, you know, I have personnel on every player. And we haven't gotten to our game plan until Tuesday or Wednesday. And then we know exactly how we're going to play. And there's just constant communication. Uh, yes. But it's important for me to also let them know. You know, some of them are parents. They need to be able to do what they do on the regular. John Jordan. 
here in the second half, a team that is trying to get back to the playoffs for the first time since 2019, and a win today would make them 3-1 and one this season. They are right there and looking very strong right now. Well, it would also make uh, Coach Oakley very happy with his team because they've been so competitive for so long. Missing the playoffs uh, didn't feel right for him. And welcoming, uh, we're going to welcome in uh, the head coach of the Killer Threes, Charles Oakley. Coach, what has been so successful for your team here to get this 18-point lead with efficient shooting, but a lot's been going right? Uh, I think, you know, I'm just trying to uh, dial in and understand that uh, every possession is a key and uh, do what you do best. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you get a lead, you shoot to it, seem to get into, like, okay, I can do it myself. But, uh, you know, just trying to tell them to stay aggressive, uh, get the fit to fit the ball. And, uh, we don't have to finish them off. They ain't going to just quit. They, they all want NBA players too. Hey, Charles, it's Nancy. What are all the ingredients you use as a master chef on the basketball court? <laughs> and what are you cooking up at 38 points? Uh, I'm cooking up uh, something like a cake. You need a lot of ingredients, so you need three guys and hope all of them on the same uh, page and just trying to play smart out there. Well, you guys are playing really well. You're doing a fabulous job with them. Thank you. Thank you. You had a great win today, too. Thank you. Coach, how do you maintain this kind of lead when there's no game clock and trying to stay sharp it's, at this point? Uh, it, it's tough. Uh, the last two games we played, it's the last two possessions of the game, we didn't really play well. And I'm, I'm trying to stay on the tell You got to play consistently. No matter if you win 20 or 30, try to stay into it. I know it's sometimes it's tough to stay engaged, but uh, we just got to finish them off tonight. You, know, you picked up an incredible player in uh, Dominique Johnson, and he played for me years ago in the NBA G League. What, what, do you, what do you love about his game and why uh, did you get him? I love him, you know, he can stretch the floor. Um, you know, you have uh, your defense, you got no head all the time, but uh, I'm trying to play him at the point today and uh, I've been getting on him because uh, he's been challenging and getting a lot of turnovers, but uh, he's playing well today and that's what all matter. And uh, 
Like I said, we just got to finish them off today. Coach, you're up by 22. Good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate the thank time. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, no. I was hoping to maybe get a recipe out of that. That's what I thought you were going with. What can I take from Charles Oakley that I'm not learning from the basketball court, I'll too? I'll send you the recipe. <laughs> I have them. Big black. Big hole that has only grown larger. It's the Killer Threes. Six points from securing this one. And hey, by the way, if you uh, go on the show, they send you all these cool grills that you see on TV. Oh, nice. I have two of them. And those are part of the rotation? Yeah, no, I'll show you one of my two. <laughs> I might take you up on that. I'll just send it to you. You know, I'm moving to a new house. I'm gonna have a little extra space here. I need to up my game, I think. In this league, you need uh, food game and you need shoe game. <laughs> That's right. I did like Mike Taylor of the Ghost Ballers in the game before, so he was going all out color, even had the leggings that were some kind of pattern. He's going to yoga class after this. <laughs> no, you mean Joe Johnson going to yoga. <laughs> Joe too. is amazing. I mean, he is so smart, has kept himself in great shape, and so much of it is what he's done over the years with yoga. Yeah. He, you know, a lot of guys in the NBA do that. They are now doing Pilates. Things that we athletes, basketball players, never thought about doing. Just leave it there. When you think that being a challenge for out of bounds. Bivouac challenging that play, and the referee's looking at the possession of that last play. I'm ready for it. I'm ready. You're right as basketball players for a long time. You think it's just ground and pound, being in good shape, working on your shot, but longevity means taking care of your body. It doesn't. Uh, didn't LeBron James say he he pays a million dollars a year uh, for for cryo for you know being in the the flotation tanks? How you know cupping, dry needling, all the things that these guys need for recovery. Your body is your money maker, so you have to take care, of it, especially as you get old. This is the play the referees are looking at to determine possession. And it was successful, so it will be a bivouac ball. Trailing by 22 as the Killer Threes inching closer to going to three and one. And you're right, Nancy, that this is a pivotal point. The midway point, three and one, just feels different than two and two. Though there are still more weeks to go in the regular season, but an important one here in Memphis. Well, it is, and, and you know, we talked about it with uh, Power. We, we had the toughest schedule of anybody to start the season. We had Trilogy, we had Tri-State, uh, then we had, who did we beat last week? Uh, I forget who we beat last week, and, and then today the Ghost Ballers, uh, oh, excuse Ball me, Hawks. Ball Hogs, who, who were playing really well. So, yeah, we, we knew, and, and then we end up turning around playing the Ghost Ballers next week. It is not easy to write that Ballhawks came into your matchup with a plus 20 scoring mark. A lot of times it is those matchups as Dominic Johnson scores inside. And it's technically point game. You can see a four pointer end this one. Carlin Green's not thinking that. It's but he is thinking a fall away mid range too that doesn't go. Yeah, I mean. The Green Brothers have not really had their best game. And you got to have that scoring for both of them. And it, they really have not been a factor in this game. Four points combined. They've been able to hit the glass. Corey Brewer, their leader, with 16 points. Whereas the Killer Three is incredibly balanced. Four players between 10 and 17 points led by Dante Green as he gets the rejection there. Killer Threes eyeing point game as they take it out on the baseline. Well, and it's not easy. Gary Payton's not here, their coach. And, you know, that puts even more pressure on Gerald to have to, you know, have that coach's mentality, but that star player's mentality. Johnson, long range two. Can't put it away just yet. Brewer, the reverse. Three's waiting on this victory. It'll be Dante Green appropriately closes the door. And a huge 50 to 24 win. Complete dominance.
Defense by the Killer Threes, start to finish. Yeah. Dante Green ends things here. We go to our final game today. It is enemies against the aliens. We'll return to Memphis after these messages. But it is the Killer Threes on top. Coming up next.